Shalom Aleichem and welcome to Machin Leira Online Smicha. You know that usually speech is a way, as a means of how people connect. And if I want to uh, share something with you, I talk to you. But it doesn't really say anything about the person speaking, just a way, a means of connection. And that's how it is talking by every other language in the world. Whereas Lashon HaKadosh, the holy mother tongue, uh, the holy, holy speech, uh, it's not only a way of how to connect, it actually tells you the etzim mahus, the, the, the essence of the person or the thing that it's being spoken about. And that's how you learn in Tanya, learn in Karbola, that the oisius of the chav beis oisius, the forms, how you, uh, whatever word, title, name, the thing was given, is that actually expresses the mahus, the essence of each thing. That's unique, something special about Lashon HaKodesh. Now the Rambam in Meir Nevuchim writes that there, it's it's very uh, exact why our our uh, language is called the holy language. What makes it holy? So the Rambam Meir Nevuchim is it, it is so pure, so nice that there are, from some of the filthy things, the non edel things that the, every other language has a word for it. In in Lashon Hakodesh there is no word for it. That's what the Rambam in Mary Nevochim says. The Ramban, however, in Shmoy Slamid Pasig Yud Gimel, he says that's not the reason. But, but again, at least we understand that not only it expresses the essence of the thing, but it's also obviously a holy thing, a holy uh, uh, language, and that we know that the world was created, the Chav Beis Isis HaTayra. And it actually says that the Lushen of Taira is marapas, is it heals, it heals the sick. How important now, how, how holy is Lashon HaKadosh? Is, uh, we know that the, uh, in davening we even say that Atav HaChatonu Mikol HaAmim, that shows us from all the nations, V'roi Mamtonu Mikol Lashon, and he, he lifted us, he made us different, even with the speech, even with how we speak, the language we use, our language is nicer, purer, more edel. It's, it's holier, our Lushen. And we know what Chazal say, that uh, in some places in the Chazal it says that because of Shalashinu Es Lashenum, because for the very fact that the Jews did not change their language, that was the merit of why the Eden left Mitzrayim, why the Eden were taken out of Mitzrayim. You know, the, in Hallow, we quote the Pasuk, it says, B'tseis Yisrael me Mitzrayim, Beis Yaakov me Am Loyez. That Beis Yaakov, which is usually referring to the women, they were taking out me Am Loyez from a, 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 a nation that has a foreign language, meaning to say that even the women, the Beis Yaakov in Mitzrayim felt that our language and their, they kept their holy mother tongue. They kept the Lashon Hakodesh, and they didn't use the Egyptian uh, speech because that's very unclean. It actually says in Svarim that um, when when you when you speak certain languages from certain from certain Medina, certain countries, it actually shows the essence. And it says, I think, in the Shemesh Mul that when you speak French, you see, you, you can feel the knee of the. Uh, the adultery, adultery that you know in every in every country, what their weakness was, it's expressed actually in the way they speak. So the question obviously becomes that the Gemara, the Gemara is written in Aramaic, and Aramaic is obviously not a lashon hakodesh. How does that happen? So there are some reasons given to this. The Chassam Sofer says. Uh, but before I tell you what the Chesam says, you have, to you have to know that the Gemara mentions that the day Talmai HaMelech asked for, or forced the, Jew, the Chachamim to translate the Torah into Greek, it was such a bad day in the history that the world became dark for three days. That, that's, how, that's how bad it was for, for the world. T the diluting Torah into other languages is uh, is not a good thing, and we know that Moshe Rabbeinu had the power. And Chumash Devarim it says, "Hoyo Moshe Be'er es Atayra Zois." Moshe Rabbeinu actually was metayim the Torah and shivim lashin. 
So how does that work? I mean, we want to stick to the Lashna Kodesh because that's that's the pure Lashon. And yet, on the other hand, we find that sometimes it's important to translate it to a Shivim Lashon. So the Chassam Seifer actually says an interesting thing. The Chassam Seifer says that um, you find that even the Yidin, when they went to other places and they were forced to, or for whatever reason, they had to use some other language, you see that they don't take the language as is. Whatever language they were forced to, to speak, because they in that country, they broke it up. They mixed in some Yiddish words. They mixed in some English uh, Hebrew words because to take the language of the country as it was set, as it's known for the country, uh, there's too much clip in there. So the Yidden speak in like in English. The Yidden would speak a teklap to English intentionally. And German and Yiddish seem to be very clear. But in Yiddish, there's a lang a rangamish that's mixed in a lot of uh, holy things because we don't want to have strictly uh, the the Goyish, the, the Goyish speech as our way of communicating. Now, uh, Aramaic says uh, says uh, the Chassam Sefer from all the languages it has the least clip on it. I mean, I don't I don't know uh, exactly what why it is that way. And he also says a very interesting thing, that it says in in, in, in Morgan Avram that one of the reasons uh, they allow themselves to translate Torah into other languages because to speak always Lush and Kurdish in Torah, you couldn't say he couldn't speak it in different places if you when the Eden lived in different countries where it was schmutz all over, saying it in Lush and Kurdish was might have been an Isser. So therefore, they specifically translated parts parts of Torah into other languages. So once they're in other languages, you could you could communicate at least even in Torah, but as long as you don't speak Lashon Kodesh, because Lashon Kodesh is a, a such a holy uh, such a holy speech that you can't even say it in a dirty place.